Sowing seeds in late summer is a great hack. In the veg garden, fresh sowings can replenish bolting crops. And flower-wise, you can get miles ahead with next year's hardy annuals, biennials and perennials. This Q&A film, recorded for The Telegraph Live, shows you how. You might wonder why I'm watering my wheelbarrow. But this section is all about sowing seeds. And when I'm sowing seeds, I like to start off with a good moist compost and then I sow the seeds. So I tip the water into the barrow. I've got a barrow full, which will probably fill about 10 or 15 of my seed cells for me. Um, I just sow it around to make sure it's all nicely moist with this wonderful little tool there trowel with its lost handle um, and then I, I use the compost, a multi-purpose compost. I don't use a seed sowing compost. The only difference being really is that this has more fertilizer in it and that just keeps them going a little bit longer which I actually like. So we did have one question that was sent in that's particularly pertinent for the top of this item and this is from Colin and he's asking how easy is it to grow vegetables from seed and I imagine the reason that he sent that in is because he's been seduced by the many adverts of vegetable plug plants and you can buy them lovely little plugs they come straight to your door and they start you off and that is fine but obviously the cost differential is massive and sowing seeds vegetable seeds is really very easy as long as you realize a few key facts they need water to germinate hence moistening the compost and the correct temperature Light isn't usually so critical. So what I do is I sow them all in cells. Now I used to, way, way back, um, I used to sow them direct in the ground, but I found the success rates were so minimal compared to sowing them in plug trays that I've totally converted to plug trays. And I use these wonderful plug trays, which I got from my mum. As you can see, they, they're sort of past their prime. And I like them because they've got these lovely holy bottoms. Uh, and now you might think that's strange and doesn't everything fall, fill through there, but it doesn't. You see, what I do when I start the bottom one off is I have this piece of polystyrene board and I put the tray on top of the board and then I fill it straight from the barrel. And I will usually do, if I'm sowing, about 10 trays at once. I might have two varieties in one tray. I don't always want a lot of the 65 plants or whatever it is in a tray of one thing. And I do think that's one thing we all do as gardeners um, is that we sow the whole packet. And really, how many people want 65 spinach plants for a family of two straight away? It's much better just to sow a bit of a packet and then save the rest for another sowing and do more and more successional sowing. Now, I suppose the key question is, why am I talking about sowing vegetables now, seeing as we're at the end of August? But I find it's a fantastic time to sow a lot of veg and a lot of hardy uh, annuals and biennials in the flower garden too. Um, so what I think is the bonus of sowing now is that things like um, fennel, dill, coriander, spinach, those key bolters that if you sow them with great excitement in sort of May, June, you'll find they will very quickly go up to flower, i.e. they bolt. So you have none of the luscious leaves, you just have a load of the um, uh, flower heads which are actually pretty useless in most cases. So I push them in there and I firm them down. I like them to be pretty compact the compost. I don't want it to be too loose. I want it pretty compact. Um, and as you see, some of these trays I'm not filling because they're broken on the sides or something like that because they are pretty old. Um, now, it might be frustrating for you to think, where on earth do I buy these? And you won't find them anywhere, I don't think. And I remember when I, they were photographed in the Telegraph for something I did and Charles Dowding rang me up you know, Charles Addy, the great Noah Dig man, he rang me up and said, oh, Bunny, where did you get your polystyrene trays? Mine have all fallen to bits and I want some more. And we both searched and we couldn't find any. 
And so he has now actually developed his own version, not polystyrene because they're so unenvironmentally friendly now. And so he's got his own version of these. And I'd hope to show you one, but it didn't quite arrive in time. But look online and he's selling those. And I think I'll use those when I finally run out of these. So I, if you see here, I've got different trays of different lengths. So basically I've cut some of these wider trays into smaller trays. Why? And that's because they fit into these galvanized trays. Now, as I said, seeds like moisture to germinate, but also as important, they like the correct temperature. And different seeds like different temperatures to germinate. So what I do, uh, because, and also you want your seeds to germinate as fast as possible, because the first seed that germinates in a batch will always be the most health, healthy, the most vigorous. Because in that little seed, they have all the energy they need to germinate. And if they're taking six weeks to germinate, they use up all that stored energy and then they just can't quite make it. Um, so you want them to germinate quickly. And it's very important, I think, to, to find a list or look at the correct temperature germinate of each thing. And then you know you're on the right lines. And so I have different areas where I germinate different things. Now, this time of year, it's all pretty warm. Um, and so it's not so critical. I mean, I have brought you my parsley. It's my French flat leaf parsley, which I love, which I sowed on the 20, well, I sowed it just under two weeks ago. Now, parsley is notoriously slow to germinate. It's one of the four difficult ones because, again, the embryo is not fully developed when, when the seed is formed and it will go on developing after you've sown it and it will often take two weeks or more to germinate. And you can see these I germinated in my greenhouse, which is not heated, but I did have this magic little perfect looking heated mat. Now you can see this is not in its prime stage of use and it's had many years of good hard use, uh, use but it, it plugs into a socket in my greenhouse um, and it keeps it warm. And with a bit of bottom heat, something like parsley will germinate very fast. So I have one air thing like that. I then have a place by my arga in the kitchen. And when I'm germinating things like tomatoes and cucumbers, cucumbers will germinate in like 24 hours next to the arga at that high temperature. Tomatoes, peppers, things like that also want the heat. So they'll germinate right by the arga. Um, and then I have my greenhouse with my heated mat or without my heated mat. And then I have my windowsill trays in the kitchen, which is warm, or I put them in a cooler room um, if I'm running out of space or I don't need the heat. So check what temperature your seeds like best to germinate first. Um, now I mentioned parsley being difficult. And I had another question in advance on this, and I thought it was interesting. It was from Margaret, and she says she always has a problem with germinating parsnips. Now, parsnips are one of the four slow ones to germinate. Like parsley and carrots and celery, they all have these uh, seeds that are not fully mature. The embryos are not fully mature, so they will take two good weeks. Now, if Margaret's sowing her parsnip seeds in February, which some packets tell you to do, and it's very cold and not very nice, um, then she will find that they might be in the ground for, it could be six weeks and there's still no show. So the chance is that they're so vulnerable to pests, to birds scratching them up, to whatever, to mice, so it's very, very difficult if she sows them straight in the ground. But if she chooses an F1 variety, and I often use Gladiator or Countess, um, then they are F1, so they're selected seeds, they're uniform, they're very vigorous, they've got the F1 vigor to them. They will germinate much quicker, much faster, sorry, and they will grow much faster. And so I can be sowing those F1 hybrid parsnips right up to really beginning of April, and they will still form stonking nice roots by September or October. Though having said that, I always like to wait till after the first frost to lift my parsnips, because then the sugars from the leaves go down to the root and they do taste a lot better. Though the last few winters, we haven't been having the frosts away past Christmas, so I get a bit greedy and lift them and there we are. But so that's the thing. So if you're doing celery, parsnips, carrots or parsley, 
do them in cells, do them on a heated mat or in a warm place. And as soon as they've come up, um, you see, so these, these little um, passes I've shown you, I will, um, I'll probably lift them out when they, uh, I'll let a few more germinate. I see some are still coming up with the little seed on the top. I'll probably wait a week or two and then I'll pop them out and I'll put them either in my cold frame or I'll put them outside in a raised bed or some in each probably. So I've got different um, maturities at different times, which is obviously a good thing with vegetables. Not only do we sow too many seeds at the same time, so we have all the crops at one time, we want to really try and stagger everything as much as we can to keep us eating more over a longer period. So we've said about bolting, um, but I'm just going to show you some of the seeds which I'm going to be sowing now. Now, these are the vegetable seeds which I've got from Frankie, which is an Italian firm. And I, I, just ha I do use Frankie quite a lot. Um, they had, although they are from Italy, they have many, many um, varieties which are equally good here. And for instance, there's the spinach, which is a really good one. So this one, if I sow it now, I could be picking in November in the in the cold um, in my polytunnel, or I should be picking sort of April, March, April, which will be lovely. And those baby leaves are just fantastic. I'll sow some radishes, which I'll be having probably in a well, way before Christmas. Some carrots I'll get in. It's quite late for carrots, but they'll work really well. Some beet, that's that's charred, and that is really good at not bolting um, and that will go on for a good couple of years I'm hoping and I love this purple chicory this is so good over winter it looks surreal when you see these lovely firm bright purple heads with the white ribs in the winter with frost all around it and they're so nice on the coleslaw and this one I love spigarello which many people don't know but and they don't usually tell you to sow it now but I often sow it now and I'll be picking it probably before Christmas and then all through the hungry gap which is that period in sort of March, April, beginning of May and that's a winner you can use the the tops and the leaves and the shoots every bit of it so that's a great one and this is a, a it's called Sima de Rapa and it's a sprouting turnip top and it's really is specifically used with pasta dish it's an italian pasta dish called orecchiette sorry it's orecchiette my italian is really really bad uh, almost as bad as my french and um you you get the orecchiette type pasta which has little ears that's a lot easier to say and you mix it with this sima de rapa and it's a wonderful wonderful dish and i have a lot of pasta dishes here and then of course miscanza lettuce that's a mixed leaves for cutting and out there cut and come again and they're brilliant and i'll be cutting these way before christmas and in the spring and i've got always with frankie you have a lot of seeds in the pack so they are good value for money uh, and i mentioned the fennel before which is uh, i love fennel i mean people say fennel is really difficult uh, to grow but i grow it as baby fennel and if you sow it in sort of july august it won't bolt i'll plant it quite closely together when i plant it out from the little modules and i'll be picking i mean last year i sowed it even later and i was picking lovely little bulbs in sort of um, february march uh, the year after which I thought was phenomenal and they were just crispy nice young fennel they weren't the huge big ones like the supermarket ones but they were every bit as tasty um, so that's a great one and then uh, obviously for the biennials and the hardy annuals now I did sow um, some dianthus um, so this is the next stage so from these if they're not going into a row in the vegetable bed outside or they're not going into the poly tunnel these dianthus barbarata and their sooty that lovely dark purple one these have actually been potted on because i haven't got room in my beds to plant them out now so i put them in these little pots and i'll keep them in a cold frame or a cold greenhouse or something and then when i've got room and it might be october it might be next march april i'll harden them off and then i'll plant them out and then i'll have lovely color later on next year and that's lovely to get a color hit other annuals or hardy annuals that you might do things like or layer or would be really good now and uh, serinthi there's quite a few varieties of serinthi that you might want to sow now 
Um, also, I've just sown some seeds from my perennial stocks. Again, they're a sort of a biennial or a short leaf perennial, and I harvested the seeds from my own plants because they're very difficult to get, and I've just sown them now. So it's a, a great time to sow many things to keep your garden really going. I think a lot of people tend to think gardening is in the summer, but I like to drag it all through the year because although you don't want to go out in the garden in the winter as soon as you're out there and you get into your stride you love it and you don't want to come in and if you can have veg homegrown veg throughout the winter and early spring months i think it really improves your diet no end and everybody says now isn't it you should be eating 30 different varieties of plant a, a week that can be fruit and veg and i think when you've got your own garden that's dead easy to do more difficult if you're shopping from the supermarket because you cannot buy this range of plants and that's another reason getting back to Colin he would never find something like spigarello I'm sure in any supermarket or vegetable thing so you can grow a much wider all by buying plug plants so you can grow a much much wider range of bed vegetables if you choose seed so we've talked about temperature now and then the pests so we do have less pests when we sow in plugs inside or in a coal frame but we do have some, and one of the big ones is slugs. Even up on my bench, when I put these all out on the bench, if I haven't put something to deter the slugs, I will find little plants just snapped off and you'll just see the stalk with no head and they've gone and taken that beautifully succulent top. So I use slug pellets and I use something called um, ferric phosphate, which is the one that's replaced the old metaldehyde tablets, which are now, or pellets, which are now totally banned. But the ferric phosphate ones are much more environmentally friendly. And if they're indoors in a covered space where birds aren't going to come and eat them, I think you're, you are really safe in using these. And you can see on my parsley tray, you can see some bits of old ferric phosphate tablets. Now these you can see are slightly fuzzy because these ones were not a particularly good grade of them. They, they actually become quite fungusy quite quickly. Um, they do vary in how resilient to wet they are, but obviously a seed tray is a perfect damp, warm environment for fungal growth as well as for slugs. Um, so, the, the, you know, try and find one that is more resistant to fungal growth because then they last longer. Um, and the other big pest obviously when you're sowing peas or beans is the old mice and these are a problem because you will sow a whole tray of seeds and you'll come back maybe a day later and you'll see one or two peas chewed up and things on the top and then you'll come back three days later and you'll find the whole lot you know they've discovered it the whole family have come in they've had a sort of massive feast and they've all gone um, and so when I've sown my peas and beans what I do to actually deter them totally. So I have this rather strange Heath Robertson approach. And I have these funny old things. They needn't be like this. They could just be too high things to support this wonderful dish on the top. And you, I put this on the top and I put it so the overlap each side and the ends is such that any mice running up could not run underneath that up and over the top. And I tell you, that fools them all the time. They cannot do it. They don't like this overlap bit. So I do that and then I put a load of trays in there. And then once they've gone and they're nice size and they've gone out, then obviously they've come out of there. So there's the trot. I used that for some cool ducks I was given. That was their little temporary pond until they went to the big wide world. But it's quite useful for that. But now it's even more useful for the vegetables. Um, so let's get back to the actual sewing business. Um, so here is the tray with the bit of thing on the bottom, the polystyrene sheet on the bottom to stop it coming out. I put it down there. And if I'm going to sew something, I always write the labels first. So I, I, I get out the labels. I write down a label for each seed packet, the date, uh, the person who's selling the seeds, because I think that's useful to know if they all fail. You want to know who to pick up the phone, because it's not always your fault and say, look, you've got a duff batch of seeds here. They haven't germinated. And I notice on this pack of seeds, which is for my lovely Pape, but it's a poppy nudicol champagne bubbles white. So it's a lovely hardy annual or perennial white poppy, which I'm going to sow now, an Iceland poppy. I noticed on the back it says 
on testing, germination of these seeds was below normal. To compensate, we have substantially increased the packet contents. Please allow for this one saying, well, I bet they only found out that when people rang up to complain. Um, so if something doesn't work and you think you've done it all right, do do that, you know, do tell them I think it's wrong. And I think generally if you use commercial seeds available to commercial growers, they have to be of a really high content or they would go out of business. So if you can find a commercial supply, that can be really good. Now these seeds are absolutely tiny. So what a lot of people do is they get a match or something and they just lift the end, uh, wet the end, and then they stick it in and, and pick up a few on the end and then just push them up. So that's one technique. Some people mix them with sand but I'm going to be more daring. I'm going to put them into the palm of my hand. And um, as always, although it looks a tiny bit of dust, um, I don't like the wind here. I'm just going to sprinkle them very quickly over the top. Now, because these are so fine, I'm not even going to push them in. And I will no doubt have more than one seed in each cell quite a few times um, as I have with the parsley. With the parsley I'll just leave like that. With these when I pop them on I will actually um, separate them out. So I can see them going in quite nicely and these are the probably the most difficult when they're little. Uh, when you get a nice big seed it's, it's much easier. You can almost feel them with your fingers how many are going down actually. There we are, and then I put the label in. Now when I'm doing a bigger seed, that you can just pick one from the finger, unless I'm multiple slowing, and then I'll just put it in and I'll just lightly press it under. Push it in with the finger, lightly press it down. And I find that is the best way to get really good contact between the compost and the seed. With those little ones, they'll just sit on top. So I think that just about wraps it up. Next time we'll be looking at watering hacks and showing how to save hours of time while producing better results.